So guys, the first thing you are going to need up in the classroom, I've given you the broken dot zip. Come in, guys. All right, that's a little project I've put together. Okay, it's got lots and lots of errors inside of it. And what I'm going to teach you today is how you're going to debug your programs. Okay, and there's lots of techniques that you can use in that one. And this is where we're going to begin. All right. Now, you guys work at your own pace, grab the projects, work on it, whatever you want. I'm just going to talk through things, stop me whenever you want, and ask questions. You alright with that? Yeah. yeah. Alright. Is that another knock? Come in. Ah, uh, not right now, guys. Running on listen. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, the first thing is, do you, what's your understanding of debugging? Ah. Uh, yeah? If something goes wrong within the program, it will not crash, it will try and sort out the problem itself. Oh, that's that's a debugger. That, that, that's really, really good. Silas? Yeah. So debugging in particular is like a programming term for you going into your program and trying to sort out errors. Now these errors could be ones like the squiggly lines you see there. They could be errors where if you run the program and something goes wrong or it just doesn't work right. Or the worst case scenario, crashes. Runtime error, nothing else can happen. So the first thing I want to talk to you about today there guys is really how do you find them, how do you kill them and realistically how do you track them down. That's the hardest part when you get to big programs that have got you know tens of thousands of lines. How do you track these errors down? So, sorry Kyle, what do you want to say? Uh, there's an error list down the bottom. Just look where they are. That's the first thing I'm going to talk about is the error list. So you guys, have you seen this panel here? Yeah. Where it comes up, you've got all your errors listed there. What these are, these aren't errors that are going to crash your program. These aren't errors that are going to occur while your program is running. These are what you call syntax errors, okay? Because they don't match what Visual Basic understands. So first of all, the thing you really need to note is not only what the message says, but you also need to have a look at the line. The line number is pretty damn important because that tells you where it is. Anyway, that aside, I've got three different errors here. You should always attack the first one because if you fix the first one, you might fix more errors down below. So if I double click on that error, it's actually going to highlight the exact part of code that it's talking about. Can you guys figure out what's wrong with that line? Uh, Kyle was the first by like a millisecond. Ah, uh, it has one instead of L. That's right, yeah. I just jammed a one there, and if I change it to an L, it's going to fix that error. So if I keep on going, okay, I've got two more errors. First of all, it says num is not declared. So what could num be? It's a variable. It's, it is a variable. So it's saying it's not declared. So what's missing? You're not declaring it, so you're not going dim, num as integer. Perfect. So I'll double click on that. We'll have a look at the error. So really, I've got dim num1 as integer there, don't I? But then I don't, there's only one of them. So what I should do is we're going to dim num2 and change him as to 2. Does that make sense, guys? Pretty straightforward so far? Yeah. All right. And then let's fix up the last error that I've, oh, that fixes both of them. There you go. How easy is that? Now, if you find you don't have the error list window, simple fix, you've got to go to view, and there's error list just there. Okay? The shortcut is Control W for window and then Control E for error. Okay? So, you guys right with that? That's the error list. That shows you your syntax errors and the errors that Visual Basic can predict. All right. If I run this program, should hopefully turn on. What do you want to add? So, what do you want to do? I want to add or divide. If I type in A, it's just closing on me. It's not actually doing anything. You can see the codes there, can't you? So there's my add sub. It should be doing something to do with that. Type in B, it's still not doing anything. Okay? So the next tool, guys, is what's called line by line debugging. All right? And it's what I've done in class a few times for you. I've just never explained it before. You can either start it by going to debug and clicking step into there. What else can you press? F8. Exactly. If I press F8, it starts it like that. So that's the actual term for this, guys. This is line by line debugging. You're right with that? Yeah. yeah. So it actually allows me to control the speed that each line is going to execute. That's why it's line by line. If I want to execute one more line, do you guys know what button that is? F8. Yeah. Or F11. I generally use F11 because of the old version of VB was F11. And so basically, it's highlighted that right line, do you want to, in yellow. So what it means is it's not. It hasn't carried that out. It's what is it about to do? It's about to write, write line to the screen. So if I press F11, now it's executed that line of code. Okay. If I go to the console, you can see it's printed it right, and it's still waiting for me. Does that make sense, guys? So 
So the more I mash F11, the quicker it's going to execute. But it's a really good way of you figuring out what's going on. So we're going to do that. I'm going to press F11 a couple of times. You'll see that it's already printed to the screen. If I keep on going, I say hit that line. Why has it done that, guys? It needs user input. That's why it's popped up. If I type something in, it's moved on from there. Okay, what did I type in? How do I figure that out? This is the beauties of line by line. If I mouse over it, it's going to tell you exactly what is inside your variable. That looks a bit awkward, doesn't it, guys? It says selection A, and then it's got the letter C on the end of it. Do you guys want to have a guess what that little C is for? No, I actually typed A. So, pardon? That's exactly it. So A's in the quotes, isn't it? Yeah. So that means it's the letter A. The little C next to it indicates that it's a character, which means it can only be one letter. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I press F11, guys, you can see my code running through. It just jumped over that entire select. Yeah. So. Oh. All right, Nick had the first hand. Well, you're, when you're selecting, doing the select case, you're turning it into a lowercase letter but you're checking to see if what they've typed is an uppercase letter. So it's not actually going to go to the sub that you want because it's not an uppercase letter. So that there, guys, is a logic error. I'm converting it to a lowercase letter, but then I'm checking uppercase letters. Does that make sense? Yeah. So even if I type in a capital A, it's going to convert it to a lowercase, and it's going to screw everything up for me. So I can do two things. I can either convert that to two upper, which I'm going to do, or I could have changed those to a little a and a little b, couldn't I? Same solution, same thing. So if I run my program now, okay, click A. I probably should have put a console.clear in there. It looks pretty but ugly. What's your first number? 50. What's your second number? 25. That looks pretty but ugly as well. And it closes on me. All right. So what am I missing, guys, at the bottom? Read line. I need a read line down the bottom. Now, I could have done this step by step to see if that worked. Or I can just assume and just put a console read line in there. All right. So bang on that. Press A. 50, 25. Addition of my two numbers are 100. Okay. Divide. You should always test both parts of your program. 10. 2. What should I expect? 5. I expected 5, but it gave me 20. What's it doing instead of dividing? Timesing. It's timesing. So what's wrong? Not an asterisk. Yes. Good job. So that should be a divide there. Okay. So debugging at its best there, guys. Yeah, division of the two numbers is five. How's that? Pretty good? So that is line by line executing, and that's general knowledge. We were just fixing it up together. So guys, the next one I want to show you is called breakpoints. I've done them. I haven't explained them, though. All right. Let's say, for instance, I want my program, I want to run it through normally just like by pressing play, but then I need to do a, a bit of line by line stepping. You saw how slow that was, didn't you guys? When I did the F8 trick, it was really slow going one line at a time, wasn't it? Let's say I want the program to run at full speed until I get to a certain point. That's when you're going to use a breakpoint. And there's two ways you can add a breakpoint to your code. This little bar over here on the left, simply clicking it next to a line of code will give you that. So it's a break point. Make sense? Other shortcut is F9 on the keyboard. That'll toggle it on and off. Nick? You can also right click and go add breakpoint. Just here? Yep. Very cool. All right, let's just press F9. The one thing... Yeah. <laughs> Two things though, you can't put a breakpoint on an empty line. So the one under it, I could not, you can't put a breakpoint on that because there's no code. And you can't put them on comments. It has to be a line of code like that, okay, that's going to happen. So if I type in A, what's happened? Right yeah. All of a sudden you see the your yellow bar again, it's paused and it's waiting and you can do line by line execution with the F11 now. And it's going to run through one line at a time until it gets to the bottom. So there's probably more errors that I could fix, just like the formatting and stuff. But that's breakpoints. Does that make sense, guys? Breakpoints are okay? Very, very handy for testing out like your individual subs, especially. Don't you reckon, Nick? <laughs> All right. 
One last tool, guys, before we call this a close. It's a pretty short one today. I'm going to show you that. Remember the variables window I've been talking about? I always go on about the, lo the autos. There's a better one than that one. Okay? I'm going to put a breakpoint in just at the top of add. Okay? Because you need the program to pause to be able to use this window. So if I go to add, all right, I'm going to debug windows locals. Up there on the top right, guys, can you see it? It lists every single variable that exists inside my sub. So I've got number one and number two, it's got both of them there. It shows you the values, and it even shows you the data types on the right. What's wrong? Nick, with a mouthful of food. String, not There's another error nobody picked up yet. Not even myself, because I forgot about it. <laughs> so it says, can everyone see that? Num2, nothing is a string. Should be a number, shouldn't it? So we need to change that to integer. And this is the beauty. Is my program running? Sure is. I just changed the line of code while it was running. And I can keep on going with absolutely no issues. And it even changed the data type up there. What's even cooler about this, let's say I type in number 50. I'm still doing line by line, by the way. It tells me it just changed to 50 because it was highlighted red. Let me just see that. Yeah. What's even cooler. I can actually change it on the fly while the program is running. So if I don't like that value and I went shit, I meant to type something else, you double click on the value column and you can type in your own. So run that. Let me just type in 25 because I'm going to edit the bugger. Let's go 9,000. No, that's 90,000, but anyway. And it should hopefully, if I go back to the program, there it is. 50 plus 25 equals 100,000, apparently. That makes sense. <laughs> makes total sense, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's pretty much it, guys. You've got error lists. You've got your, um, what was the second one we were talking about? Line by line, breakpoints, and then your locals window. Any questions, guys? That is pretty much debugging in a total. They're all the tools I use to debug my programs. I will give you more in the future to help you out. But for, that's pretty much it. How's that, guys? Is that all right? Yeah. Cool. Have a go if you really want.